everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 4 of Daryl20's Mod Spotlight, covering Create. Uh, today's feature list of things to cover uh, is long, but we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to take a look at minecarts and how minecarts can interact with Create. We're going to take a look at templates and the building uh, canon. We're going to look at trains, along with the minecart section, the cuckoo clock, rope pulleys, redstone stuff, and mechanical crafting, which is something we haven't covered yet. Uh, and we'll probably also take a look uh, at the furnace engine. So lots to cover here. Let's get started. So th first things first, I want to show you how minecarts can interact with create, because this is pretty bananas. Um, first off, you're going to need a cart assembler. That's really the main thing. If you try to place it in the world, it'll tell you you can't do that. You have to place your cart assembler on a rail block. So I'm just going to real quick set up a simple rail block system here. And you know what? Let's just, let's go for broke. Let's place down uh, a couple powered rails on either end so that we can mess with that a little bit. And maybe some buttons just to be uh, extra cool, right? We'll pop them there and there. Uh, and some blocks on either side. And I'm going to put the cart assembler right here in the middle. Ish. Ish. So you'll notice the cart assembler has one of these sticky pieces on top, right? Aha! Uh -huh. You've seen these before. You've seen them on the rotating thingies and the pistons, right? Yeah. Uh, so guess what? You can turn mine carts into moving platforms using the cart assembler. Yes, you heard that correctly. So for example, let's do a very simple one. I'm going to place a chest right on top of the sticky thing. Now, what you need to do is give a redstone signal to the cart assembler to indicate that when a cart passes underneath it, it's going to turn the cart into a multi-block platform using the cart assembler. You ready? Boom. How cool is that? Hello, chest. How are you? Oh, and look, when it moves the other direction, it turns around. That's neat. So the chest is facing that way. Now the chest is facing this way. Totally intended mechanics. And if you remove the redstone signal, when the cart passes underneath the cart platform, it's going to drop the thing back and turn it back into a block. Pretty cool. And guess what? If you thought, hey, Dyer, can I use linear chassis? Yes, you can. Can I use uh, the radial chassis? Why, yes, you can. Uh, so you can very easily set up all kinds of a cool system here, right? Look at that. Uh, and the same rules apply with like super glue and all the other stuff. So everything you've already seen with the pistons and the rotational blocks that we checked out in previous uh, segments of the spotlight all apply here. All 100% work, right? So the whole wrenching things and wrenching multiple blocks thing, like all that 100% fits. Don't forget your sticky glue here though, because that's an important part that I forgot. So don't forget to forget about that. There you go, that's better. Nice. So now, uh, and obviously this is a silly contraption, but we're going to turn on the redstone signal and... <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> How cool is that? It's shenanigans right there. Uh, and then, like I said, to unload the thing, just remove the redstone signal from the cart, and when a cart passes through, it drops its stuff off. So do drills work on this? Yes. Do saws work on this? Yes. All the things that we saw on the on the pistons, the things that can like drill and break blocks, 100% will work on this. Items automatically land in chest? Yes. All the mechanics that you're familiar with on the piston system will work on the cart system. How cool is that? Now, sometimes you may not want your cart to rotate when it's passing and, and moving in certain directions. So what do I mean by that? Uh, well, when it moves across a thing, it's going to be facing the direction it was facing when it picks up the items. But when it moves in opposite direction, it's going to turn that whole setup around. You may not want that. So what you do is you can change the setting here uh, with the wrench, and it's really going to be hard to see at this angle. Cart movement mode, always face toward motion, pause actors while rotating, or lock rotation. If we put it on lock rotation mode, uh, you can go ahead and send your cart through there and it'll pick up the uh, all the stuff you would expect. Go on, buddy, move. You can do it. Oh, so much effort. And then if it's going the opposite direction, it just won't spin, right? So there you go. See, no spinning. So lock rotation might be useful under some circumstances. So let's build something cool with this real quick just to demonstrate what's possible. All right, so let's create a little tree farm with Create. 
Uh, so to demonstrate how powerful this can be, I'm gonna go ahead and place the following. First off, I'm gonna place a couple radial chassis, uh, and I'm gonna super glue on this block face, and we're gonna check out a new block today that we haven't seen yet, and that is the deployer, which can punch, use, or activate blocks. This machine will try to imitate a player as much as it can. Uh, it can take and deposit items to its own inventory. Held items have to be inserted or extracted from the block directly. And if it's on a moving platform, it'll happen automatically with the chest interaction that moving platforms has. Uh, and when it's uh, got a filter assigned, it'll decide what it can do. You can also hit it with a wrench to change it to uh, punch mode, where it'll try to break blocks or hurt players. Uh, but the gist is, is that this is like gonna place blocks and do all kinds of interactive stuff for you. So what I'd like him to do is I would like him to place saplings. So that's gonna be his job. So I'm gonna filter him to saplings. And that means you place saplings, buddy. That's what you do. Got it? Good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and place a chest on top here, by the way, uh, and throw, uh, you know, a few saplings in there. That's not like a plan. I'm going to put like just four or five in there. That sounds, that sounds like a good deal, right? Now, since we're going to be placing saplings, trees are going to grow. We're probably also going to go ahead uh, and want to, mm, I don't know, cut down those trees. So for that, we're going to use a similar block, uh, the mechanical saw which I've got one of right here ready to go. So the mechanical saw will cut down trees, and when it's moving, it'll cut all trees with which the saw collides, which is important. It just does like a giant cut down all the things. Uh, you can also use it as a block form to do sawing and stone cutting and a few other things. So it'll automatically um, do some, some recipes for you when it's in block form, which is kind of cool. Uh, so if it's got multiple outputs, you can filter it to which one you want, or it'll rotate through all of them. Uh, or you can go ahead and just, you know, strip logs and then turn the logs into planks, that kind of stuff. And you can use that with belts and all kinds of things. But on a moving platform, it'll cut stuff down, which sounds fun. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get some smooth stone here, because as usual, it doesn't super matter what you use to, to build this out with, right? So uh, the recommendation that I've found is that if you want to do this, make sure that um, it's at the bottom level here. So I'm going to place this saw right here right? And that is where you want it. You want it to be at the bottom level, which means it'll hit the bottom block right here. And saws and drills only break full blocks. They will not collide with things like rails uh, or, or saplings. They won't collide with non-full blocks. But if you do want to pick those up, by the way, you can use the mechanical plow. Uh, it's movable with pistons, bearings, and controllers. Breaks blocks that cannot be collided with, such as torches, tracks, snow layers, etc. Same for saplings. So this block won't break non-solid blocks, aka it won't break saplings. The plow would. The plow can also be used to till soil, by the way. So with this setup, what will happen is, as this goes around, the deployer will plant saplings. The uh, saw will not break saplings, but it will chop down trees. Should we give it a try? I don't know if I made any mistakes with glue, but we'll find out. Oh, look, it's working. So there's my little buddy. He's, uh, he's, he's placing. He's placing things. Luckily, I got some bone meal. Oh, look who stopped. Boom. Look at that. How cool is that little setup right there? And then when the saw collides with them, boom. A little bone meal. Now, if you want, you could, uh, you know, unload your cart and check in your chest and you'll find the oak logs and sticks that you collected. And obviously it planted what saplings it picked up uh, and it'll work like any other trail. You'll get apples and all the other normal stuff. So up to you, the player, to find uh, a fun and interesting way to do this. This is obviously a very basic and simple approach to creating a tree farm with Create. But uh, hopefully that demonstrates to you the capabilities that are possible. Can you use this cart system to make drills that mine out the world? Yes. Yes, you can. Can the little placer here place more rails in front of the cart so that it can keep moving in an orderly fashion? Yes. Yes, it can. In addition, I'd like you to know that if you have two carts set up inside these uh, little cart assembler dudes, and you set up a system of components that connect to each other, these two carts can be linked. So if I activate one of these, it'll automatically detect that there's one giant system here connecting two cart assemblers, and then boom. You can see that these two carts are linked together into one giant system. Uh, and the benefit of this, realistically, is what we could do is we could put like a furnace cart on the back of one, right? Uh, and that would be cool. And then we could put coal in there and do the normal minecart coal thing. All right, that's kind of neat. 
So there's several things you could do with this. Um, obviously, that you can see here that that are that are pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. And see, now it's you know minecart furnacing. At some point, it got turned around there. Something weird, but I probably did something funny with with cart rotations. Anyway, you get the point. And if you just want to link two carts without uh, using the assemblers there, you can do so with this minecart coupling. Boom! How cool is that? Uh, and then we can do that, and you get the idea. Spiffy. And this is how you build some of the cool trains that you might have seen uh, in, in, in some of the spotlight videos showing off what Gray is capable of. So you can use things like the seats uh, to go ahead and create some really big and impressive train systems. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I was obviously using it through that segment. The controller rail here is a unidirectional powered rail. Totally useful to use with these things. Now we've seen a lot of different ways to move things around, carts and pistons and rotational. There's one more that I haven't shown yet, and that is the rope pulley, which moves attached blocks and structures vertically. Use chassis, slime, or super glue. All the standard rules that we're used to at this point apply. Uh, so basically, it has a little rope that'll move down at the same speed as the generator. So obviously this guy's set to a pretty slow speed, just to demonstrate. Uh, and then it'll pull up and it'll attach to whatever block it sticks to. And that can be a chassis block. Uh, that can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, and this is a cool way to form elevators and all kinds of other cool stuff. Now, considering all the blocks and mechanics of this mod that can interact with redstone, it only makes sense that there's going to be a few redstone additions that this mod adds. That includes things like the analog lever, which is a lever with more precise control over its emitted signal strength, uh, and a few other blocks that we'll be taking a look at in the following segment. I'd also like you to know that there's some full-size blocks that are pretty interesting as well. The redstone contact, for example, which I'm going to show now, it only emits redstone signal in pairs. It is movable with mechanical pistons and pairings. Uh, when it's facing another contact, contact, it provides a redstone signal, and it triggers all stationary can contacts while moving as it passes it. What does that mean? It means that if you place it on top of one of these cart systems or a piston or anything else, and it moves past another stationary contact, it'll emit a redstone signal, like so. Ta-da! So as it passes across here, the contacts come into place, the redstone signal triggers, and you get the idea. Pretty neat. Next up is the Content Observer. It detects items inside containers and conveyor belts matching a configured filter. While the observed inventory or belt or chute contains the item, this will emit a redstone signal. And if a funnel transfers a matching item, it'll emit a redstone pulse. So, for example, if I were to place stone inside the filter here, whenever this thing has stone inside the chest, it's going to emit a redstone signal. And when it doesn't, it won't. The same will be said for items moving across it on belts. And as mentioned before, if uh, hooked up to a funnel, for example, over here, we could place one of these. So a simple example here would be setting this to detect when stone is being removed from the endosite tunnel. You can get a redstone pulse every time that happens. Pretty cool. So the next two items I'm going to show you are in tandem to each other. Uh, this here is the stockpile switch, which toggles a redstone signal based on the amount of stored items in the attached container. It's kind of like a comparator, except you can configure thresholds at which point the signals become inverted. And when you right click it in the world, it'll open up the interface, which I'll explain here in a moment. I'm going to combine this with the adjustable crate, which is a fancy storage container that allows you to control its capacity manually. It can hold up to 16 stacks of any item, and it supports redstone compatibility. So right now it's set to hold eight stacks or 512 items and you can scroll to change that and you can hold shift to scroll faster. So if you really only want this thing to hold 10 items, you set it to hold 10 items and when I shift click a stack in there, it'll only accept 10 items as you can see. Pretty cool, right? Uh, let's go ahead and set this, oh, well, we'll keep it at 10, right? Uh, and then I'm going to adjust my stockpile switch here. Let's say when we get to, oh, I don't know, 20%, uh, all right? Uh, and 50% here. The way this is configured as it sits right now is once we go above 50% or more than five items in there, it'll start emitting a redstone signal and it'll move it down to the redstone signal lane. And then when it goes below 20%, it'll move back up to the top lane, which is no redstone signal. So we have to get it up to five, turn on redstone signal, below two, turn off redstone signal. You ready? So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, four out of 10, five out of 10. Did I click wrong there? I might've. One, two, three, four, 
five. There we go. Now we're cooking and we're emitting a redstone signal. See it over there on the right? And then uh, as we remove items here, uh, it has to go below two uh, to, to, to stop being at that threshold. So if I drop it here, we can see that, right? And then drop it to two and that's when it turns off. Got it? Uh, now, if we wanted to, we could invert this signal uh, and it'll just do the reverse, right? Uh, and it'll, it'll behave like that. Pretty cool. So now when it goes above, let's say 50%, it'll turn off the redstone signal. And when it goes below, let's say 20% again, let's make it 10% just for fun. It'll turn back on the redstone signal, right? So boom. And then it'll turn back on once we go below 10%. So see how it's not on over there? But we do this and now we're below the 10% threshold and you get the idea. So I'm not gonna go super deep into each of these repeaters and whatnot, but you can get the gist of it pretty quickly. Uh, one example is the analog strength lever. You can, you know, turn it on and have it emit a specific strength, right? So right click to increase, shift right click to decrease. Uh, in addition to that, there's the pulse repeater, which is pretty cool. Uh, it'll just simply repeat a pulse redstone signal. So, uh, you know, when we place it here, for example, you'll see it pulse. And then whenever it gets a redstone signal, it'll pulse, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a simple, straightforward way of just doing a one tick signal pulse. Um, there's a couple others, adjustable repeater. Uh, these guys are pretty cool. Uh, it'll let you adjust the number of ticks between the redstone pulse uh, being relayed or not. So that's pretty neat. Um, you know, just a handful of things. Oh, that is cool. That was really neat looking actually. Let's make it one second. I like that. I like that a lot. Look at that, how it like lights up slowly. That's cool. Love it. Love it. So many, uh, so many little just nuances to this mod that are beautiful to see. Uh, so play with the redstone things. There's a powered latch here, an adjustable pulse repeater. Um, this is similar to the adjustable repeater. Just it does it with a pulse, right? Instead of staying on that kind of stuff. So neat things. Uh, there's also a Nixie tube that I'll show you guys. These are these are cool. Uh, this will go ahead and tell you the signal strength of power that you're getting. So remember, there's two lines here. So if I uh, bump this up to say uh, let's say four or five, right? This will show a four here because that's the signal strength that's coming in. Uh, you can also use these with a name tag uh, with a chain of them and it'll display the contents of the name tag. Just a neat little, little thing to, to see there. Uh, cool. Now let's take a look at the schematic cannon, which I think is a pretty neat thing to take a peek at right here. So the schematic cannon is a way to copy and paste structures in your world. There's a few things you're gonna need to get started. First off, you're gonna need a schematic table. It's somewhat optional. And then you're also gonna need a schematic cannon with a, a chest underneath it or adjacent to it. So I kinda like putting them on top. I think they look pretty good like that. Nice, schematic cannon. It's a complicated looking UI, but I assure you it's not that that hard to use and it's actually really cool. So first off, let's build a structure in the world that we wanna copy. So I'm just gonna build like something, I don't know, like that, sure, why not? And I'm gonna put a chest on one side just to demonstrate uh, that, that, well, you know, I'm gonna put the chest over here, that tile entities work, because they do. Uh, then you're gonna want an empty schematic, which is nice and easy. Uh, the tooltip tells you the gist of how uh, it works. Uh, you're also gonna need a schematic and quill, which is an empty schematic and a feather. So the schematic and quill is used for copying things in your world. Uh, the schematic itself is used for pasting. So the way this works is you take a schematic and quill and you right click on one corner of an area and then you right click on another corner of an area. Cool. And then once that's done, the schematic and quill can tell you that you can control scroll on the faces to adjust the size. So for example, if we wanted this to go up a little bit higher, we would look at the top size of the area and control scroll. Hold the control key and scroll your mouse wheel and you can adjust the size. If you want to uh, adjust it in that direction, you would do that, right? Look at that side of it um, and adjust it out however you wish. Pretty cool, right? So a neat way to do it. And I just love like the smoothness of it. It doesn't jump. It like, it smoothly expands. It's so cool. It looks so good, right? I gotta steal that for building gadgets, for sure. Uh, so once you're happy with it, right click and give it a name. We'll just name it test, check. What that does is it actually saves it inside a folder on your computer that you can now share if you wish. Uh, and if you come over here to the schematic table, you'll see all the schematics that are available. So right now we've only got one. If we had multiple, you would use your scroll wheel 
to move them around, right? Uh, now put an empty schematic in there and hit the checkbox after you select the appropriate one. By the way, you can click this button, it'll open the folder on your computer that contains all these schematics and you can share them with your friends or share them on you know, some website or something. So pretty cool way to, to share schematics. Just hit the checkbox here, it'll write the schematic and now we can see we've got this guy, the written schematic, slightly different uh, icon on it. You can hold shift and control to see some information about it. Um, so if you uh, sneak right click this guy, you can set the coordinates on where it's gonna be and you can also mess with the rotation and the mirroring of it, which is pretty awesome. However, if you want, you can just go ahead and place it in the world like we've done here. And uh, you can see that on the bottom, there's all this information about how to adjust where these are. So if you hold the left alt key, as it indicates, you can adjust whether you're moving the X and Z, moving the Y. Um, deploy is only available, uh, this checkbox, print, is only available if you're in creative mode. So if I take myself out of creative here for a minute, you'll see that the third, that last option there is not available. So you can paste these if you're in creative, but if you're not in creative, you have to use the schematic cannon. So if you wanna move it, it's really simple. So let's say we wanted to move it on the Y axis, we would highlight that, let go of left alt, and then use um, control and mouse wheel to adjust it. See how that works? Now, if we wanna move it on the X or Y axis, we would control and mouse wheel. Pretty cool, and same deal as before, you look at the side that you wanna move and it'll take care of it for you. Uh, if you want to rotate it, uh, you can do so like this and do, 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 do. pretty cool. Uh, and I forgot to capture the, the chest in there, didn't I? I was messing with the up and down and I, and I forgot to actually move the chest. So we should probably get the chest included. So what I'm gonna do is make another schematic quill here. We will click you, we will click you, and then we will right click, test two, save. Okay, um, and you'll see it you know, while the schematic is here, it's kind of mirrored, it's shown in the world a little bit, but they're not real blocks. Uh, let's go ahead and show you now that test two is an option that you can scroll through. And I'm gonna take this schematic and write test two to it. Cool. So let's say we wanted to place that schematic right there, looking good. But I kind of wanna, I think I wanna rotate it, right? So let's rotate it like so. Yeah, that's the way I want it to be. Let's put it in deploy mode, right click on the ground to place. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I think we should be cool. So you can see it's again, just, just, just fake rendered right in your screen there. We now wanna place the schematic inside the schematic cannon. So place the schematic there and it's ready to start being placed. However, it needs gunpowder to fuel it. So go ahead and add some gunpowder for fuel. Nice, lots of shots, so we should be fine. Um, if you wanted to, you could place a book here to print a checklist for your schematic. So we wanted to get, let's try that out. Uh, I think it's just a regular book, let's see. Ooh. Materials list, nice, by schematic cannon. That's cool. So there we know, we need a chest and we need nine stone. Good to know, duly noted. Uh, and then when you're ready to, to do the thing, just hit the, the play button and it'll start placing. Do note there's some printer settings down here. Uh, we'll take a look at these after we place it. How's that sound? So uh, it's telling us here that we're missing items, stone. So make sure you have like whatever resources you need. Cool. Haha, <laughs> look at that. And now he's probably missing the chest, so let's give him some chests to place. Ding! Ding! Finished. And the, the play and pause and stop button do exactly what you would expect them to do. So the printer settings here are pretty neat. You can um, turn on and off settings like don't replace solid blocks. So it's currently disabled. The cannon will never replace any solid block in its working area, only non-solid and air. Uh, you can also set it to replace solid with solid. So it'll only replace solid blocks, um, replace solid with any, replace solid with empty. Uh, so you can basically tell it how you want it to uh, replace blocks if you're writing to an existing area. So do you want it to overwrite stuff and clear out the air around it? Do you want to just write blocks on top? Do you only want to write to empty space? That kind of thing. And then also you can skip missing blocks if it can't find certain things it's needing and protect tile entities, which I think is on by default. It'll avoid replacing blocks such as chests. So schematic cannon, very yes. So one of the last things I'm gonna show you today is the mechanical crafter. These can be used to craft literally any recipe that's available in Minecraft in a vanilla crafting table, but it 
is also necessary to craft certain things. So for example, the crushing wheel, you need to craft it in a mechanical crafter. You're gonna need 21 of them to craft a crushing wheel. Uh, and the reason for that is it's like a vanilla crafting table recipe where you put blocks together, but it's bigger than a three by three recipe. It requires more than nine ingredients. So you need a crafting wheel to do this. Uh, however, pretty much anything that you can craft in vanilla Minecraft, uh, you, can, you can go ahead and make. So for example, if you wanted to make stone brick slabs, you could do that with three automatic crafters. Let me show you how to use them. So first off, start placing your mechanical crafters like so. Um, you're gonna wanna place them uh, all in one plane, kind of like I'm doing here. And because I want to make a, cr a crushing wheel, right, one of these guys, we're going to want uh, 21 of these. So your best bet is a 5x5 five five area. Could be bigger if you want. Uh, now, what you want to do is note that there's arrows on these. What's going to happen is the items in the multi-block crafter are going to be moved into each other. Um, so you want the arrows to face in such a way that everything is moved together. So I'm going to rotate this so that these guys are all facing down. Okay, and I'm gonna rotate these guys so that they're all facing to the left. And these ones are still facing up. So what'll happen is the items will move down to the center, they'll move up to the center, and then they'll move to the right, and then they'll eventually reach this end point. Uh, and on this end point, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a chest. If you don't do this, it'll just drop into the world, which I guess isn't the end of the world. And since we're powering a big construction, I think I should show you one more type of generator, which is the furnace engine. This is a way of generating a large amount of stress capacity. However, it does require a fuel source uh, by way of a running furnace. Uh, so to get it to work, first off, you place a furnace engine, which is made mostly with brass, so you have to get into the brass age for this, on top of an existing furnace. And then one block space away from that, you're gonna go ahead and place the flywheel, which uh, you can see is a large metal structure, and it does indicate that it should be one meter apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that guy here. When it connects those wires, you know you've done it correctly. In order to get this thing running, the furnace has to burn. So do something to make the furnace run. And all of a sudden, it'll start running. How cool is that? Not too shabby. And that will allow your kinetics to run. And you'll notice that all the mechanical crafters gears interconnect with each other and they'll start moving and be ready to run. So let's go ahead and build the crafting recipe for the crusher inside this thing real quick, just to demonstrate how it works. So as we can see here, the recipe is a piece of stone in the middle, some wood around it, and then all andesoid alloys around that. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the stone in the middle like that, and then I'm gonna click the andesite alloys all around it like so. Pretty cool. And that should be what we need to do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my cog wheel here, and hopefully this is running fast enough, we'll find out. Remember when you see the arrow, that means where the cog wheel is gonna go, and hopefully everything starts to behave. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in this one more piece of stone in here, and then I'm gonna give this guy a redstone signal courtesy of uh, a lever or a redstone torch, something like that. And he'll start crafting for us. And you'll see the items kind of smush all together, and that's gonna do our craft for us. Pretty cool. It'll turn into the, the wheel and then drop it into the chest, which also could have dropped into a conveyor belt system or something like that. So that's how mechanical crafters work. You just wanna rotate the arrows so that everything winds up smushed together at one end point and then throw a chest there. I could have easily had everything go all the way down and then all the way to the right and have the chest on the bottom. It's kind of however you want it to look. All right, one more little fancy gadget, which I personally love, uh, and that would be the cuckoo clock. I'm gonna uh, allow time to run again and we'll notice that the cuckoo clock is super cool. Um, he's really simple and straightforward. Uh, the, the little clock moves around there to tell you what time it is. Uh, it's getting close to noon. So as soon as noon rolls around, uh, we're gonna see the cuckoo clock spin into action. All right, cuckoo clock, show me, show me something cool, would you? I think it's close to noon. Maybe it's actually just 11. Oh, there we go, it is noon. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So a nice little way to know what time it is. Also have some fun, a little a little chime there. Uh, and I think when it's about to be nighttime, uh, it's a creeper that pops out. So I'll let you guys figure that out on your own. 
All right, so that's wrapping up point for part four of the Create Mod Spotlight. I think I covered pretty much everything. There's a few things I didn't touch on. Uh, for example, reminder, I said early on when we were looking at mixers, you can brew potions with them. Uh, and we looked at the fluid system, but we didn't specifically cover um, making potions within the fluid system. I'm sure you can figure it out yourselves, though, because I've shown you the pieces of it. So go put it together yourself and make something cool. Uh, I think I've covered most of all the individual pieces. There's a handful of things I didn't cover, but you should have a pretty good idea of what they do. Um, so, for example, I didn't cover exactly the mechanical harvester, but it's a neat way to harvest crops on moving platforms, much like the drill and the saw can do things. So I'll let you guys try that out yourselves. Uh, I think what we're going to do is have one more episode of the Spotlight where I'm going to put together a cool, couple of cool fancy machines so that I can show you how some of this stuff can be put together to make something neat. We already saw a little something like that with a very derpy looking but functional uh, tree farm cart. So we'll check out a couple other things like that. For now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Take it easy.